Welcome back, guys, to Reading in Your Bible, Day 26. If you're just joining us for the first time this year, I'm reading through the entire Bible in a year. You can start the Bible plan in the link in the description. Also linked in the description is a playlist where you can watch all these videos in order so that way we can read the Bible through together. Without further ado, let's hop into what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to cover two topics. The first topic is what do we do when someone hurts us, especially a fellow Christian, and the second topic is, why do evil people prosper? In the book of Job, we get this long speeches that Job does, Hebrew poetry between him and his friends. This is chapter nineteen, thirteen. My relatives stay far away, and my friends have turned against me. My family is gone, and my close friends have forgotten me. My servants and maids consider me a stranger. I am like a foreigner to them. I have been reduced to the skin and bones, and I have escaped death by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, my friends. Have mercy on me from the hand of God that struck me. Must you also persecute me like God does? Haven't you chewed me up enough? This is the NLT version. I really like it because it talks like how you and I talk. And here in this story today, we're looking at what Job's done. So Job, to catch you up, has been a righteous man. He's been a good man, and he hasn't really done anything wrong to deserve what's happened to him. Oftentimes, I think we follow God because we think that if we follow God, we'll get blessings from God. And I've been talking about this as we go through Job, is the purpose of following God is not to receive blessings from Him, but it's to follow God because we love God because He first loved us. But with Job here, his friends have been very, very mean, harsh, and dare I say even evil towards him in ways that are not loving, that are not kind, telling him that you must have designed, you must have done something to deserve this, or your kids must have done something to make you deserve this. The, God is righteous and good, so therefore you are evil and sinful, and you deserve this. When we know, as someone that has read the entire story up to this point, that that is not true. So how do we apply this to our lives? Well, I think that we can apply it to our lives by looking at when other people are hurting us, what should we do? What does Job do? Well, the first thing that Job does is he, he turns to the Lord. He humbles himself and he prays. We see that at the very beginning of the story. Then the second thing that Job does is he begins to have a conversation with his friends back and forth. So turning to the Lord, praying, be humble. Maybe you've done something wrong. Maybe your friends are trying to rebuke you because they love you. And then secondly, just asking them more. I think adults or people that are mature are not going to hide from conflict. They're going to come and confront it. When we have an issue, we need to confront it, not over social media, not over text, but at minimum on a phone call or at best in person by confronting the conflict between the two people openly and honestly as two people that are humble and love the Lord. That, that will end up with the best outcome. But what if that doesn't happen? What if, like what we see in Job's case, his friends are evil to him and make him feel worse and worse and worse and actually push him farther away from God? What should you do in that situation? Well, I think that there's a lot of grounds for breaking fellowship. And let me understand this or unpack this a little bit better for you. If you've reached out and you've, you've offered forgiveness to someone multiple times and they keep on doing the same thing to you and they're not willing to change their character, they might accept your forgiveness. They might even offer you an apology but they're not willing to change the actions. I think there's a lot of biblical grounds for breaking fellowship, for saying that, man, I love you and I forgive you and you, you really hurt me and this is a boundary that I need to set up, that I'm not going to let you come in to my life to the point where I'm going to allow you to hurt me in that way again. And that's a really hard thing to do and a really mature thing to do, especially if the person is really close and intimate with you. As we see in Paul's story, he breaks fellowship with some of the other believers around him. There's other biblical characters that do the same. So when someone is not willing to change the actions that they are doing that hurt you, and you've offered forgiveness, you've forgiven them in your heart, and you've gone to them and tried to make reconciliation, you've prayed about it, but that's not going to change anything. The, the best thing that I'd recommend you do is break fellowship for a while. Maybe not be so intimate with that person if they're going to continue to hurt you in the same way over and over and over. I hope this gives you some encouragement on what to do if you're struggling with a friend like that. The second thing that I want to dive into is when the wicked prosper. This is Job 21. 
in verse 23 and following. One person dies in prosperity, completely comfortable and secure, the picture of good health, vigorous and fit. Another person dies in bitter poverty, never having tasted the good life, but both are buried in the same dust, both eaten by the same maggots. Evil people, this is verse 30, evil people are spared in times of calamity and are allowed to escape disaster. So we see this all the time when an evil person prospers, when evil people seem to be doing the best in the world. Why is that? Is God blessing them? Is God allowing that? My viewpoint on it is that we live in a free world where we're freely at this day and age able to do whatever we want. We have free will to choose right or to choose wrong. God says, I set before you life and death and choose. So there's people that choose evil and they look prosperous in the eyes of the world. They look like they have everything in the eyes of the world. But oftentimes, if you go into these elite circles where very evil people tend to run, that are very wealthy, very successful in the eyes of the world, they are some of the most depressed, hurting people out there. I've actually, I went to this um, big event once that I was filming, and all these people, they were multimillionaires. They had hired me to come film their karaoke night. And these are people that in my town, people would look at as, man, that person's really successful. When I grow up, I want to be like that person. I wish I could have what they have. I mean, $10 million state on the lake, beautiful infinity pool. And they were just black out drunk. That's where they got their joy is by forgetting their life through drinking. To me, that's not prosperous. So my first thing on that is sometimes prosperity from the outside isn't prosperity from the inside. And secondly, just because something's happening in today's world does not mean God is endorsing it. That means that God is allowing it to happen. But one day, as Job says in Job 19, 25, but as for me, I know my Redeemer lives and he will stand upon the earth at last. One day judgment is coming and the evil will not prosper in that day. So they may be prospering in your eyes today. But I promise you, judgment is coming. And revenge is mine, declares the Lord. It's not for ours to take. We just need to humble ourselves, love God, love people. And revenge is His. And He will make sure the prosper, the, the, the wicked do not always prosper. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you back here tomorrow as we continue reading through the book of Job.